Continuing with our qualitative study of the wave equation, today we are going to introduce two properties which we may say are exclusive to hyperbolic equations and hence in the second order equation that we are going to study namely wave equation, heat equation, Laplace equation. So, these properties are exclusive to wave equation and they are known as domain of dependence and domain of influence. We will discuss uh, more on that in this lecture. So, the outline for uh, today's uh, lecture is first we start with uh, defining what is domain of dependence and domain of influence and then we in short I write DOD and DOI. So, we find out what they are for one dimensional wave equation and then what they are for two and three dimensional wave equations. So, Cauchy problem for homogeneous wave equation is given by this the wave operator or d'Alembertian equal to 0 that means we are considering homogeneous wave equation and this is a Cauchy data u x 0 is phi x u t x 0 equal to psi x. So, we have already solved this uh, Cauchy problem in earlier lectures. So, the, there are two questions on interrelationship between the Cauchy data and solution. So, we are going to pose those questions now. Question 1 let u be a solution to the Cauchy problem for homogeneous wave equation. Let x naught t naught be a point in R d cross 0 infinity sometimes we say x naught t naught is a space time point, point in the space time. Of course, u of x naught t naught being the value of the solution at the point x naught t naught to the Cauchy problem it would depend on the Cauchy data that is not a surprise. So, now the question is does the solution depend on the values of phi x and psi x at every x in R d that is the question. If the answer was yes or maybe then we will not be devoting a lecture to this topic therefore, answer is not going to be all x in R d. So, there will be a specific domain in R d we will soon see that. So, set of all x in R d on which the solution u of x naught t naught depends through Cauchy data is called domain of dependence for the solution at the point x naught t naught. Let us move on to the second question. Let u be a solution to the Cauchy problem for homogeneous wave equation. Let x naught be a point in R d. The Cauchy data at x naught recall the Cauchy data phi and psi are defined for x in R d. So, the Cauchy data at x naught namely phi x naught and psi x naught is expected to influence the solution. Now, does the Cauchy data at x naught influence the solution u of x t at every x t in R d cross 0 infinity? The answer is set of all x t in R d cross 0 infinity such that the solution u of x t is influenced by the Cauchy data at the point x naught in R d is called the domain of influence or region of influence of the point x 0. So, here once again answer is going to be not every x t in R d cross 0 infinity the Cauchy data x naught is going to influence. Okay. Remark on the two questions and their answers. The two questions could have been asked for non-homogeneous wave equation also. Answer would still depend only on the solution to the Cauchy problem for homogeneous wave equation. Why is that? The Cauchy data and the source term do not interact. Recall the formulas that we have derived for the solution of Cauchy problem to a non-homogeneous wave equation. So, past and future cause and effect these are the two points of view that we can present domain of dependence and influence. Question 1 let us rephrase it. Suppose I am standing at a point x 0 at time t 0 that is at the point x naught t naught in the space time. What is causing or responsible for the current state u of x naught t naught? from the past situation or data at time t equal to 0. Question 2 rephrased suppose I am standing at a point x 0 in R d at the initial time t equal to 0. 
what are the points x t in the space time at which the data are situation at x 0 at time t equal to 0 that is at the current time or initial time influences or affects the future state u of x t. So, cause and affect past and future dependence and influence. Rest of this lecture is devoted to determine the domain of dependence and domain or region of influence for Cauchy problems for the wave equation in d space dimensions d equal to 1 to 3. The explicit formulae for solutions to Cauchy problems namely the Alembert formula for d equal to 1, Poisson-Kirchhoff formulae for d equal to 2 and 3 they will be used, the formulas will be used. So, let us move on to one dimensional wave equation and find out what is the domain of dependence. The Alembert formula for the solution to Cauchy problem is given by u of x naught t naught equal to phi of x naught minus c t naught plus phi of x naught plus c t naught by 2 plus 1 by 2 c integral x naught minus c t naught to x naught plus c t naught psi of s ds. So, to compute the solution at the point x 0 t 0 what we need is the values of phi are needed exactly at two points x naught minus c t naught x naught plus c t naught and the value of psi are needed psi appears here it is an integral on the interval x naught minus c t naught to x naught plus c t naught. Therefore, the domain of dependence is the interval x naught minus c t naught comma x naught plus c t naught this is the interval which is the domain of dependence for the solution at the point x naught t naught. So, this is the picture here we have the point x naught t naught this is the interval on the x axis x naught minus c t naught x naught plus c t naught. If you notice x naught minus c t naught is nothing but the, the line through x naught t naught the characteristic line given by x minus c t equal to x naught minus c t naught where it touches the x axis is precisely x naught minus c t naught comma 0 we are not writing that we just write x naught minus c t naught. Similarly, x naught plus c t naught is the point of intersection of this x axis and this characteristic x plus c t equal to x naught plus c t naught. So, this is the interval on the x axis on which the value of the solution at x naught t naught depends. So, the solution at x naught t naught depends only on the Cauchy data from the interval x naught minus c t naught comma x naught plus c t naught. What do we mean by this? Suppose I take two sets of Cauchy data phi psi and phi 1 psi 1 so that they agree on this interval x naught minus c t naught comma x naught plus c t naught that is phi is identically equal to phi 1 psi is identically equal to psi 1 on this interval. Let u and u 1 denote the solutions to the Cauchy problems for the wave equation with this Cauchy data phi psi and phi 1 psi 1 respectively. Then u of x naught t naught is equal to u 1 of x naught t naught. In fact, u of x t is equal to u 1 of x t for every x t in the triangular region determined by the two characteristic lines through the point x naught t naught on the x axis. For example, right this is the point x naught t naught, this is x naught minus c t naught, this is x naught plus c t naught. Suppose I take a point which is inside somewhere here, of course we know the value at this point will depend on this interval's value, but on this interval phi and psi are equal. Therefore, this holds for any arbitrary point that you take, the solution will be the same with both the Cauchy data not going to change. So, this is the uh, domain of dependence picture once again x naught minus c t naught x naught plus c t naught. So, I have already demonstrated suppose I take a point here then the solution at that point depends on the values of the Cauchy data on this interval. So, if I take a point here these are the characteristics passing through uh, this point and where it touches on that is on this. 
So therefore, if the Cauchy data phi psi and phi 1 psi 1 are coinciding on this interval, then the solution will be same for both the Cauchy datas that is u and u1 coincide on this triangular region. In particular, changing the Cauchy data outside the interval x0 minus ct0, x0 plus ct0 has no effect on the solution at the point x0 t0 because the solution at x0 t0 depends only on the values of phi and psi in this interval. Therefore, if you change it outside does not matter. That was what was proved by considering the two uh, Cauchy data that we considered phi psi and phi 1 psi 1 which are agreeing on the interval x0 minus ct0, x0 plus ct0 therefore solution is the same at x0 t0. Outside this interval phi psi may not be same as phi 1 psi 1 that does not play any role at all. So that is the effect of change in initial data is not felt at the point x0 for all times t less than or equal to t0. Let us uh, have a look at it again. So, this is the point x0 t0. What, what does it mean? This is the point x0. This is x0 minus ct0, x0 plus ct0. Suppose I am standing at the point x0, this is a t direction, right? t direction. Suppose I am standing at some time t equal to capital T then I am at this point. At this point solution is here, right? it depends only on this interval. So up to this time it will depend only on the values here. Suppose you cross this time and stand here, then yes, this part will be new, right? this piece, this, piece, this part will be new and here phi equal to phi 1, psi equal to psi 1, but here phi may not be equal to phi 1, may not be true. Okay. So therefore, the solution at this point if u of x, let us call this point as x0, t1. So u of x0, t1 may not be same as u1 of x0, t1 because in this piece and in this piece phi and psi we have no information whether they coincide or not. So thus we may say that the solution at x0 t0 has a domain of dependence given by this interval. So let us look at the domain of influence of a point x0 on the x axis. It is this set xt in r cross 0 infinity such that the domain of dependence of solution at xt contains the point x0. So what is that? Suppose uh, this is my x, this is my t directions, suppose I am a point x0. Now what is the domain of influence of x0? It contains those points xt such that the dom its domain of dependence contains the point x0. Let us consider a few points and see let us take a point P. The solution at this point will depend on this interval and this is the domain of dependence for P. It does not contain x0. Therefore, this P does not belong to domain of influence of x0. For example, I am at this point in space time. Okay. Now, the domain of dependence for this new point Q is this interval and x0 falls inside that. Therefore, Q belongs to the domain of influence of x0. Let us consider one more point. Suppose I am here R, the solution at this point, okay, this is the domain of dependence for R. Of course, x0 is not there in it. Therefore, R does not belong to domain of influence of x0. Suppose I take another point here at this point. If you notice in the domain of dependence for this point, yes, 
x not belongs to. So, therefore, x not influences the solution at s. So, s belongs to the domain of influence of x0. So, since the domain of dependence of solution at xt is this interval x minus ct x plus ct, the domain of influence of x0 is, is this set. Let us look at this picture here. Okay, if I take a point here, of course, x0 will lie in the domain of dependence for this point. Okay, whereas, if I take a point outside this V shaped region, definitely no. Okay. Similarly, imagine this is R, exactly same problem, I have already written dots here. The domain of dependence for R is this interval and x0 is not in that interval. So, any point which is outside the V shape region x0 will not belong to the its domain of dependence and on the other hand any point inside this V in this region x0 will belong to the domain of dependence for solution at the points in this region. Domain of influence of an interval, we have considered domain of dependence of a point. Now, we are going to consider domain of influence for the interval. How do we define that? Let us take an interval on the x axis. Domain of influence of this interval should be the union of domain of influences of the points of the interval a b. Thus, domain of influence of the interval a b turns out to be the set of all those points x t such that the domain of dependence of the solution at x t has a non empty intersection with a b. So, let us uh, draw this line and take a piece here a b this is our interval. Now, let us find out certain things for example, I am at a point here. Okay. So, at this point this is the domain of dependence for this point p and it does not intersect with a b. So, therefore, p does not belong to domain of influence of the interval a b. For example, I take another point at this place let us call it q. Huh. Here this is the domain of dependence for q and it intersects this interval a b. Therefore, therefore uh, the point q belongs to the domain of influence of the interval a b. Now, the region which is given here is nothing but this. this is x minus c t equal to b, this is x plus c t equal to a. So, if you take any point in this uh, uh, tub shaped uh, region, let us say here, then definitely the domain of dependence will intersect a b for this point r. And if you take a point here, let us call it uh, S, then also it is going to intersect the interval a b, the domain of dependence of that. So, therefore, the domain of influence of the interval is this particular set. Yeah. So, here once again we have this picture, if you take a point here, this is the domain of dependence for p, it is not intersecting a b, if this is a point q, the domain of dependence is here not intersecting. On the other hand, if you take a point here R, then it is going to intersect. Okay. It is much bigger than AB, but definitely intersects AB. And if I take a point here, this is S, then like that, still intersecting. So, if this is precisely the domain of influence of the region a b. Let phi psi be supported in this interval a b. Okay, I am taking such a data that means phi and psi are 0 outside this interval a b. 
So, this side phi and psi are 0, this side phi and psi are 0. For each fixed t positive, where is the support of x going to u of x t? So, let us fix uh, time. So, this is the time, right? So, this is t equal to some capital time t. Now, if you notice a point here, a b will not influence the, this point p or any point which is to the left side of this particular line, it will not influence. Therefore, solution is 0. And similarly to the right side of this line, to this side if you take any point q, u at q is also 0. Therefore, only on this really it may be non-zero. So, therefore, the support is contained in this interval. What is this point? And what is this point? That you can uh, check it is going to be an interval actually this is A, A has moved this side by time t we are going to see you can compute and see A minus C t similarly B has moved this side to this point ok this is B plus C t this is A minus C t. So, support will be contained in this. So, support might increase ok. Of course, uh, you see original A B is the support for phi and psi and now the support is here for the solution at the time t equal to t. It might increase, but notice support is still compact. The support of A and uh, support of phi and psi is inside A B it means it is a compact set, support is a compact set. Now, the support is inside this interval, it means this function has compact support. That is an interesting uh, uh, observation about the propagation of the uh, initial disturbances. Let us look at the two dimensional wave equation and domains of dependence and influence for them. This is a formula for the Poisson Kirchhoff formula for the solution of the Cauchy problem for the wave equation in 2D. Now, if you notice the formula depends the values of phi and psi only on this disk. Therefore, the domain of dependence for the solution at the space time point x1, x2, comma t is this disk of, of radius ct with center x1, x2. One may also consider closed disks that is not a problem because it is an integration right. It is an integration. So, the boundary what is the difference between the closed disk and the open disk it is a boundary and that does not make uh, any uh, change to this integral. So, it does not affect the integral. So, there is no plus here there is a problem ok fine ok. So, if you want it to be a closed set if you want it to be a closed set but there is no need for asking that. So, we do not take this point of view. Now, what is the domain of influence that is given by set of all space time points such that distance between x1, x2 and y1, y2 is less than c t ok. The y1, y2 x1, x2 distance is less than c t that is the domain of influence. Please convince yourself about this answer, everything comes from this formula. So, this is a set of all those points which can be reached within time t from y. What is this? This is the distance between the bold face x and bold face y that is less than c t ok. If you divide distance with c, so distance by speed is less than this t. So, that means you reach within, within the time t from y to x or x to y. So, three dimensional wave equation what are the domains of dependence and influence? This is the formula Poisson Kirchhoff formula S of x comma c t is the sphere. So, therefore, the domain of dependence is S of x c t because that is where the integrals are on right. And domain of influence of the point y in R d is now norm x minus y equal to c t because of this sphere earlier it was a disc that is why, why it was less than t 
now this is fear therefore distance is precisely ct. In other words those points which can be reached those points x uh, which can be reached exactly at time t from the point y. Let us summarize we introduce the dual concepts of domains of dependence and influence like past and future like cause and effect. Extending the concepts of domains of dependence and influence for IVVPs is straightforward. Domains of dependence and influence were computed explicitly, explicit formula for the solutions were used. In lecture 5.3 we will arrive at the same conclusions without using the explicit formula for solutions. But of course we have to use something. Thank you.